Hi, this is Kevin from Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to be working through questions 21 to 25 of the Intermediate Maths Challenge from 2021. But I actually don't think you should watch this video, because I've put all of these questions and more into a free online course called Get Ready for the Intermediate Maths Challenge. In that course, you can work through all of these problems, you can uh, check the answer, you can watch the video solution, but as well as the video solution, there's also a short video hint before each question that will really help you get into the problem and give you the best chance of solving it for yourself. So I'll put a link to that course in the description below. You can go over there and sign up now, totally free, and there are no ads or distractions like there are on YouTube either. So I do really think that's the best way to prepare for the Intermediate Maths Challenge, but of course if you'd rather watch the uh, solutions here on YouTube, you're also uh, very well welcome. Do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, it really helps me get this content out there. Otherwise, we will uh, get on with the questions now. The key result we want to use here is one about area scale factors. That says if you've got similar shapes, that the areas scale up in proportion to the square of the way that the lengths scale up. I'll show you in the context of this question what I mean by that now. So we've got these four types of triangle, right? We've got the one that's got area one. We've got one that's got uh, area nine. Uh, we've got one that's got area 16 and then if we could work out the area of the big triangle we could work out the area of this inner hexagon. So we can see that the area here, skip from the first one to the second one, scales up by a factor of 9. Right, 9 is 3 squared, so whatever the uh, length of the side of the original triangle is here, uh, let's call it x, then this one uh, must have length 3x. Similarly, uh, if I go from the first one to the last one here, there's a scale factor of 16, and 16 is 4 squared, so the length of this triangle must be 4 times the length of the original one. And what we can see on the picture is that the large triangle is made, the, the one side of it is made up of a side of the smallest one, the middle one, and the third one here, so actually the total length of this one must be uh, 1x plus 3x plus 4x, which is 8x. And that means that the scale factor from here to here is going to be 8 squared, because the length scale factor is uh, 8, so I mean the area scale factor from here to here is 8 squared, which is 64, and so the area of this large triangle must be 64. Now then, just to get the answer to the question, the inner hexagon is just that large triangle uh, 64, if we just let focus on this one, say, uh, minus each of those smaller ones, so we're going to subtract 1, 9, and 16, so that's 64 uh, minus 26 in total. So that gets us to 38, and so the answer must be D. If you start trying to multiply out this expression as it is, you're going to end up with something very complicated. So what I want to do here is to look at each individual bracket and see if we can write it in a simpler way. Uh, so 1 plus 1 over x, right, I could say the 1 is x over x, so I've got x over x plus 1 over x, uh, and that gives me x plus 1 over x. For 1 minus 2 over x plus 1, if we try and do the same thing, okay, if I put it over the denominator x plus 1, I'd have x plus 1 over x plus 1 minus 2 over x plus 1, and that's going to give x plus 1 minus 2 on the top, so that's x minus 1 uh, over x plus 1. And then for the final one, 1 plus 2 over x minus 1, that's going to be x minus 1 over x minus 1, plus 2 over x minus 1, so that will give me x plus 1 over x minus 1. So when I multiply all these together, the product is going to be x plus 1 over x, multiplied by x minus 1 over x plus 1, multiplied by x plus 1 over x minus 1. I don't really like using the time sign here, actually it's a bit unnecessary, and looks a bit like an x, so let's just get rid of that, or maybe we can use a dot for times if you want to. Um, now you can see things cancel here, so I've got an x plus 1 cancelling with an x plus 1, I've got an x minus 1 cancelling with an x minus 1, and I'm left here just with uh, x plus 1 over x, and no more rearrangement is needed, because that's one of the answers here, and the answer is E. So we've got a semicircle and uh, another kind of semicircular arc here. Uh, so the first semicircle has radius 2, and uh, so the first thing I'd want to do here is to put in this line so we can work out the radius uh, of the semicircle that has the shaded part in it. So this is a radius here, this is also a radius, so that would be 2, and then you've got Pythagoras theorem on this right angle triangle here, which says that, you know, the uh, this uh, x here 
would satisfy x squared equals 2 squared plus 2 squared, so uh, x squared is equal to 8, or x is equal to the square root of 8. Really handy to be able to just do a little bit of simplification of certs for the IMC, um, as uh, we'll talk about in the Go for Gold in the IMC course. And that here is, uh, the thing we want to do is to write root 8 as root 4 times root 2, so we can just say, oh, that's 2 root 2, okay? Because what that means is I can say this diameter is 2 root 2, and then the radius is half of it, so the radius of this circle uh, that this semicircular arc comes from is root 2. Okay, so that means that the area of the whole uh, semicircle, like this whole bit including these two parts here, um, would just be a half of that circle. The area of a circle is pi r squared, so here that would be pi times root 2 squared, which is just 2 pi, and I want a half of that for the semicircle, so 2 pi over 2 gives me pi for the area of, uh, let me just write this, let's write that as a, b, and c, right, so the area, so the a plus b would give me pi. So actually what I want to do is to work out the area of b, so I can sort of subtract that off. So uh, to get the area of b, I would just look at the original circle and say, okay, the quarter of the circle, um, you know, b plus c here is uh, pi r squared over 4, it's a quarter of that circle where r this time is 2, Okay, so I've got pi times 4, or 4 pi over 4, which is pi. Okay, uh, but the area of C, C is just a triangle, half base times height. So half times 2 times 2 is equal to 2. So actually, B, the area of B here is uh, pi minus 2, the quarter of the circle minus the triangle. And that means finally that the area of A is, uh, you know, um, pi minus the area of B which is pi minus pi minus 2, so the pi's cancel out here, and we get a nice exact answer of 2. Uh, so the answer here is B, 2. Sam writes on a whiteboard all the positive integers from 1 to 6 inclusive once, and then also P5s and Q7s, and then the mean is 5.3. So I'm just going to write that down algebraically, right? The mean is always the total divided by n, where n is like the number of numbers, right? So if I add these numbers together, we're going to do 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, and then we're going to have P5s, so they'll add together to give 5 times P, and Q7s, so that'll add together to give uh, 7 times Q. And the total is going to be, well, there's 6 plus 5, sorry, 6 plus P plus Q uh, numbers here, so that will be the total. And we need that total to be equal to uh, 5.3. So if you add these numbers together, uh, you get 21, so we've got 21 plus 5p plus 7q divided by 6 plus p plus q is equal to uh, 5.3. So if we multiply both sides by 6 plus p uh, plus q, that will uh, clear out uh, the denominator here. So we can just uh, just get rid of that. Oh, rubbed out the p by mistake. So we've got something like this. Um, I would probably prefer just to multiply this all by 10, uh, so I don't have any fractions uh, here, so 21 plus 50p plus 70q is equal to 53 times all of this, so we multiply that out, 53 times 6 uh, gives us 318, and then I've got 53p and 53q. So if we tidy this up a little bit, uh, subtract 50p from each side, I'm going to have 3p here, subtract 53q from each side, I'm going to have 17q here, and 318 minus 210 is 108. Now we're always looking out for common factors and things in math challenge questions in this sort of question uh, for sure. Uh, what I notice here is the right hand side has a factor of 3. Quickly looking at the divisibility test for 108, you know 1 plus 8 is 9, 9 is a multiple of 3 so I know this is a multiple of 3. Um, so I get 3 here times p plus 36. So the thing I notice here now is that for this to work q is going to have to be uh, a multiple of 3, right? P and Q have to be uh, integers here. Um, so, uh, because the right-hand side is a multiple of 3, so Q needs to be a multiple of 3. Now, if I took Q equals 3, well, actually, you could just ignore that because there's no option for that in the question. Um, but if you took Q equals 3, actually, this number wouldn't be big enough. P would have to be negative then because you know, 17 times 3 is only 51. So, to make this work, it'd have to be negative. So, the first one uh, that works is Q is equal to 9. If I do 17 times 9 for 17q, that gives me 153. Uh, and actually then I could make 3, so then 3p would be 153 
uh, minus 108, which is 45, so that would work with P equals 15. So we can make this work with Q equals 9, and the answer is B. So in this question, we're really just going to use this formula, speed equals distance over time, over and over again, but it is a tricky question. Um, so we will have to take quite a lot of care. So Thomas has these constant speeds for both running and walking. So let's call his running speed V and his walking speed W. And it says when the down escalator is moving, so the escalator is going to be also having uh, a certain speed that it's moving at. Uh, let's call that E for escalator. Um, then he can run down it in 15 seconds or walk down it in 30 seconds. So let's write speed equals distance over time uh, for each of these pieces of information. So if he's running down the escalator, he's going to be getting his running speed and also the speed of the escalator. They will combine together to give his total speed. Okay, so we'll have that V plus E is equal to, now we don't know the length of the escalator, so let's just call that uh, X uh, and say that that and divide that by 15. If you want to here, you could just give X a number. You could say X is one or a hundred or whatever makes it convenient. Uh, because the if you think about it, the length of the escalator actually can't uh, really matter for this question. Um, anyway, we'll leave it as X just uh, to be reassuring here in case we're not confident that we could take any value of it. because that requires quite a lot of intuition, I think. And we'll be able to do it quite neatly anyway. Right, so that's V plus E is X over 15. Um, and he can also walk down it in 30 seconds. Uh, so that would, so his speed walking down it would be W plus E, right? So that'll be X over 30. And it says when the escalator was broken, it took him 20 seconds to run down it. Okay, so uh, that means he's just running down it. So his speed will be V. So we know that V is equal to uh, X over 20. Right, there's various ways you can do the algebra here. But what I really want to do here is to work out his walking speed uh, down the escalator. So if I could actually form something, uh, a very similar equation like this, right, I could just do W equals X over some number here, then I'd have exactly the same sort of equation. And this would be the uh, time it takes him to go down the escalator. So I'm going to do this in a very neat way. We could just write that W here is, well, I know W plus E, right? And I could subtract V plus E from it, right? And then the E's would cancel out, right? If I just multiply out these brackets, that would give me W minus V, and then I've got E minus E. So this would be just W minus V, right? So if I just add V to that as well, uh, then I'm just left with W, okay? But all of these things um, I know, okay? So uh, W plus E is X over 30, V plus E is X over 15, and V is X over 20. So again, as I said, X really doesn't matter here at all. I'm just going to factorize it out of this expression, in fact. So it's X times 1 30th minus 1 15th plus 1 20th. If I put all those over a common denominator, I'm going to get 2 60ths uh, minus 4 60ths uh, plus 3 60ths. 60 is the lowest common multiple of 15, 20, and 30. So that gives me X times 5 minus 4, or 1 60th. Okay, so I've got that the walking speed is equal to x over 60. So again, whatever the distance of the escalator here is, uh, the time uh, taken is going to be uh, 60 seconds. And so the answer is E, 60. So very hard question. Lots of ways you could do the algebra at the end there, by the way. Um, so however you've done it, if you've got the answer, uh, really well done. So I really hope that was useful. Don't forget, I think the best way to prepare for the Intermediate Maths Challenge is to click below and take my totally free online course, Get Ready for the Intermediate Maths Challenge, where you can work through all of these problems and more, not just with the solutions, but also with video hints to help you get started. So do check that out if you haven't already and share it with your friends. Please do like this video and subscribe to the channel as well. It really helps me get the content out there and I will see you soon.